Salut tout le monde. Now, I'm a huge advocate of self-study when it comes to learning almost anything. And one area of study which is suited fantastically well to it is language learning. So I've finally gone ahead and created a list of my five top self-study language learning tips. So without further ado, c'est parti. So before we dive in, I just want to give you some of my credentials so you know that I know what I'm talking about. Well, officially, I've taken and passed the Delft B2 exam, and now a couple of years on, I'm probably unofficially, because I haven't taken the exam, around the C1 level. Only about one month of my French studies has been spent in a French school. The rest has been with private teachers, both in person and online, and with various language exchange partners and friends over the last few years. Right, so let's get into the list. Number one is set yourself goals. These can be quite vague, but the more specific you make them, the more of a recipe for success you are setting yourself up for. Indeed, as you advance, you will find that you need to make your goals more and more specific because you have learned more and more vocabulary and grammar along the way. I'm a big fan of the SMART goal method, and if you haven't heard of that before, I'll drop a link to it down in the description. But essentially, it is a way to create specific, measurable, ambitious, relevant, and time-bound goals for yourself and it works on a variety of topics but I found it works really well with French. Write your goals down, it really helps to keep you accountable and at the very least just the thought process of thinking about what the goal shall be will help you figure out the work you need to do and the process you need to take in order to achieve that goal. Perhaps it's on a weekly or a monthly basis but whatever it is, writing it down can really set you on your way to success. But how do you choose what to study? Well, that brings me on to number two, which is all about being efficient. Only learn what's relevant to you. Now, the great advantage here of self-study is that you get to choose exactly how, what, when you learn. So, if you do not need to learn about gardening, then don't learn about gardening. Your hobbies perhaps include running, going to the gym, painting, learn the vocabulary and the grammar and the expressions that are going to apply to those subject areas because the chances are extremely high that you're going to be using those in your speaking and in your writing. It will increase the speed at which you integrate into France or French speaking country if that is where you live and it will make you feel a hell of a lot more confident more quickly because you're having the opportunity to use that vocabulary much sooner. And as I mentioned earlier, as you advance, it becomes harder to know what subject areas to tackle. So the more the subject area interests you, the deeper you can dive while still enjoying it and still finding out new expressions and new language to learn and play around with. You'll be able to talk about these topics in a much deeper and a much more advanced, well-rounded way. Number three is all about scheduling your learning in advance. Don't give yourself a chance to prioritize something else over your language learning. We often say we don't have time for things, but actually what we mean is what the task is, is not as important to us as other things going on in our life. So if you've decided that French is really important to you, then put it in your calendar, put it in your diary the week or the month ahead. So you're less likely to think of something or have something come up that takes priority over your French. I find a commitment such as language exchanges with a partner much more difficult to get out of and make excuses not to go to because you don't want to let the other person down. So if you've got regular speaking commitment with a friend or a language partner or even an online teacher, then book them in in advance and you will most likely stick to that arrangement. Numéro 4 is to stay curious. Now, this is one that I found was one of the secrets to my success, if you like, that I didn't realize until semi-recently, I've always got my favorite translation app uh, on the dock of my phone, so on every page that I scroll, it's always present, ready to be tapped on. So whenever I hear a new word, I see a new word, perhaps in subtitles on a film, or I just hear it when I'm out 
in public, I will be just one tap away from finding out what that means in English and then I'm therefore one step closer to being able to use it immediately in my speaking. And I find that when my ear is always open because I'm curious about the language, I want to learn, I love to learn French, then I'm never ever going to stop learning no matter how long I've been in France. Granted, this step is a bit more of an abstract and vague one, but I must tell you that just because I'm always curious about learning new words and why someone has said something in a certain way, where it came from, how it's connected to English, because French and English share so much history, that I have grown to the level that I have now. Et numéro 5 is to simply make time for speaking. I can't emphasize enough how important this is, and I know you all know it, but a lot of us are very guilty of leaving speaking until last because, let's face it, it's the most scary, especially when we're at a lower level, but it still impacts us as we go through the intermediate and even the advanced stages because there's always a new challenge, or at least if you're self-studying, you should always be setting yourself new challenges. Similar to number three, where we talked about scheduling your learning, you should schedule your speaking because the production of the language in itself contributes hugely to how well and how quickly you're going to internalize and remember that new language that you've that you've covered in your comprehension exercises, such as reading flashcards, listening to the news, watching the TV. You shouldn't get too bogged down in using language learning apps and books and online resources, you should make sure that you're giving your brain a chance to try and produce the language that you're studying. So it's really important that you don't shy away from this task. And yes, of course, it gets easier as you get more advanced, but that's just because you're in more and more common situations where you get the chance to practice your common language all the time. Keep pushing yourself to talk about uh, subject areas that interest you and find ways to practice these niche topics with others. I've done a video all about language exchanges and how to make the most out of them for your speaking practice and I'll put a link to that in the top right corner of this video and it will also be down in the description below. I really hope that you learned something from this guys and it's given you the boost you need to carry on with or start self-study for French. Honestly, the fact that I've learned to incorporate it into my daily life, I can live and breathe studying the French language, even if it's a 20 second bite-sized pieces per day when I hear something interesting around me, or if I am doing a full-on one to two hour study session. It really has changed my life, and I really do fully endorse self-study over other study methods, such as going to group classes, because really when you get to choose your own material that you're going to learn and your schedule, you'll really start to improve so much quicker. And I really hope some of you find success with this method. So let's quickly recap the points we've covered. Numéro 1 is set yourself goals. Numéro 2 is be efficient in your study. Learn only what's relevant to you and what you're going to need to produce in the immediate future. Numéro 3 is schedule your learning in advance so you can't make excuses when it comes around to it that point in the week. And also by having it in the diary in advance means you'll gradually develop this positive habit of learning French at set times during the week. Number four is stay curious. Always keep your ears and your eyes open for new language. Have a translator app at the ready to make sure you can look up something you hear right away. Et numéro cinq is make time for speaking. Speaking is so important and it will actually accelerate the process of integrating that new language into your long-term memory. And let's face it, I'm sure most of us are learning French so we can use it, so it's a good idea to actually use it. Voila, c'est fini. Any resources I've mentioned in this video, guys, will of course be in the description down below. If you enjoyed the video, please don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed for some weird reason, please go ahead and click on that big red subscribe button just below the video. And of course, share it with anyone else who you might think would find it useful. But until next time, everyone, merci de regarder. À la prochaine. Ciao.